right. Well, hello and welcome and welcome and hello. Today is Thursday. Today's not Thursday. Today's a day of the week. Today, today is probably, if we're being real honest, today right now is probably Thursday night, possibly Friday morning before I get this video up. But welcome. Welcome to a vlog-ish type of video. This is literally, okay, not literally. Look, I know I shot video in this office before, but this is like the first real official video of this brand new office. My office is not at 100% right now. I have nothing on the walls. I have like no art going on. I got some shelves. I got I got a new purple couch. Is it a purple couch? Uh, it's purple and it's new and I got some shelves and I don't have any art up, but yeah, I just, uh, I wanted to shoot some video. I wanted to shoot a vlog-ish type of video. I'm gonna do that thing. There's gonna be a lot of stuff missing from this video. I'm gonna do that thing where I put all of the timestamps right here. I definitely want to do viewer mails. We have some comments of the week. There might even be getting to know Grim Green. I do wanna have beer. Here's some things I don't have. I don't have any vape mail, and I don't have a retro vaping. We might be able to squeak out a random juice tasting. I realized that we could probably do that pretty easily. I don't have anything set up right now. I haven't picked out a juice and I don't have an atomizer ready to go, but that's easy enough to set up. So we can probably do a very random juice tasting in this here vlog video, but welcome. Welcome to my new office. I'm getting settled up here in LA, Los Angeles, California, La La Land, which believe it or not, I, I haven't I haven't watched La La Land. Everyone tells me to watch La La Land. They said, especially if you're moving to LA, you need to watch La La Land. I haven't watched it yet, but I mean, it's on my list. But anyway, like I said, I wanted to shoot some video because I had some stuff that I wanted to talk about. I wanted to get out there on YouTube and I haven't had, uh, you know, regular uploads during this moving time. Moving is just, yeah, look, moving is the worst. We all know that moving is the worst and I just want to say it again that moving is the worst. I've gotten fairly good at it as far as being able to keep all of my important vape stuff and important like, you know, grim green stuff all together so that I can set Set up my office as quickly as possible and kind of hit the ground running with with content on YouTube but a few things this time kind of did get uh, maybe a little bit lost in the shuffle this just th this move happened really insanely quickly you guys it, it was a very sudden sudden move to LA so I didn't have a whole lot of time to prep but anyway we're gonna get through this we're gonna get through this video and it's gonna be awesome before we get too far into this video I do want to do that thing that's my favorite thing that I like to do where I hear from one of my subscribers so right now I'd like to hear from Brian hey Nick what's up man my name is Brian just want to give a quick shout out to you for all the stuff that you do and help with all the videos about three years ago two three years ago it was your videos from way back in the day that helped me quit I went mouth to lung, which I still do to this day. A little direct lung here and there, but for the most part, I'm mouth to lung. It's keeping me off cigarettes, so I appreciate that and appreciate the videos. So shout out to you for that. But my other thing is I know you do beer tastings. I don't know how you feel about cider, but there's a, a cider. It's called Woodchucks. This is their gumption flavor, brand, whatever you want to call it. This is the one I do. They have an amber, an 802, a dark and dry pear. They do a whole bunch of flavors. So maybe you want to try this. Give this a try if you're a cider person. And also to let you know, I do a podcast for hockey every Tuesday. And I took you hello and welcome, welcome and hello. Just as a sign of thanks and respect for all the help that you've given me into quitting with all the knowledge that you have. So shout out to you. And if possible, I want to shout out the Vapor Exchange in Stoughton, Massachusetts. The guys over there, Matty Duff, Chris the owner, they're all great people. They're all there to help. So... Thank you to you. Thank you to them for existing. And uh, yeah, man, to you. <laughs> yeah, Brian, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Mouth to, lung, mouth to lung for days. Whatever keeps you off cigarettes. That's awesome. Boom. Here, let me give you a shout out. Bump that fist, sir. Thank you so much for the kind words, Brian. And as far as the cider, I like the way that you said that, Brian. That's cool as fuck. Cida. I don't know if you're into cider. You got that mass, you know, accent. Cida. I've been trying a lot of ciders. Ciders are really popular in the UK. They're, ciders in the UK are, are readily more available than a lot of beers are, which is interesting. So I drank 
a lot of cider in the UK. Been getting into cider. I might go pick up some ciders to put here in this vlog video instead of a instead of a beer. We've been drinking beer in this vlog for years. I mean, years now. So maybe we'll open it up. Maybe we'll loosen it up a little bit and we'll try out some ciders. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what was the shout out he wanted to do? Vapor Exchange. Vapor Exchange somewhere in Massachusetts. Sto Sto Staunton? Stoughton, Massachusetts. Maddie, Duff, and Chris at the Vapor Exchange. Yeah, absolutely. You are absolutely shouted out. I like it when I like it when people want to shout out their shops. I feel like shops don't get enough love. That was the whole point of the vape tour. Shops need to get a whole lot more love. So if you have a shout out, kind of like Brian, that you wanted to do, that you maybe want to see in this here vlog video, if you want to shout out your local favorite shop feel free to do that send them on over nick at grimgreen.com just mark it that video thing or the shout out video thing i don't know but you may end up at the beginning of a grim green vlog anyway thank you so much brian for sending in that video what i want to do right now is just real quickly talk about what i've been vaping it's not a whole lot of stuff just because i've been moving these two things you guys have seen before in the last video these are still going strong the zenith chroma a kit glacier banana for mouth to lung and that wake mod co little foot kit this is filled up with that bonanza juice i have the bottle now bonanza from culinary confections it's just a really delicious I, I get banana from it i get like banana walnuts from it i just i just think it's a delicious juice and it tastes rad in this uh wake tank Yeah, that's great. That's just a really great solid vape. You know, when you're moving and you're and you're walking around your house and you're trying to unpack boxes and you're organizing stuff and you're getting into arguments with your with your Casey Pickle. Yeah, it, it happens. We have plenty of couple fights. When when all this is happening, I just wanted a vape that I can just carry around with me to do these tasks or something that I can just pick up and vape right away. As I said in the in one of the other videos, the last video I did when I was in the car, it's like, yeah, I love mechs and drippers. You know what I mean? I got a mech and a dripper right here. It was the first thing I set up when we got to this new place. But using a mech and a dripper when, when you're being active or when you're moving and you're trying to like move boxes and direct things and pack boxes and unpack boxes, a mech and a dripper isn't ideal. So these two little guys have been just uh, the saving grace of my move. They've been completely awesome. Uh, one of the first things I unpacked as well is that Squid Industries double barrel with the Aquitas RDA. In fact, one of my uh, one of my Patreon Cool Kids Club members corrected me recently on how to pronounce this word. Sherlock Ohms over there from the Cool Kids Club. He says it's pronounced Equitas. Equitas. Equitas? I feel like Sher Sherlock Holmes is right. He said that with a lot of confidence in that live stream. Equitas. Anyway, I've got the Equitas on top of the Squid Industries double barrel. It's loaded up with Bro Trip. I got a DHD nub tip on top because it fits perfectly on this atomizer. And I've really just been enjoying this atomizer. I love that you can bleh your juice through the drip tip just like a champion with this atomizer. This is a 0.16 at about 90 watts. I got the airflow closed off about halfway and yeah it's rocking that is borderline kent vape that is borderline hot intense kent vape and speaking of the kent vape uh, i don't have the kent vape set up right now it, it got cleaned right after vape jam uk haven't set it back up i am kent vapeless also been rocking these two particular pod systems the whole time i was in the uk i was using the jewel i was using the jewel like crazy i bought a jewel in new york um just because i wanted one i wasn't super stoked with what i had brought to new york it's, it's not that i wasn't super stoked with it okay fine here's the backstory here's why i bought a jewel in new york city it's because i brought my me pod with me and I love love my me pod my me pod I, I don't go anywhere without my me pod the me pod is fantastic unfortunately the juice that I like to use in my me pod is a 50 50 PG VG blend it's the it's the Namber classics I like Atlanta peach leaf and these bottles are not conducive in any way to filling up the me pod they work 
unbelievably well in the me pod, but these little tips right here are not, 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 not conducive to filling up a me pod. And so I would spend, I don't know, 20 minutes every morning with this stupid bottle and that little me pod and the little pod has the tiniest, tiniest little opening. And I'm trying to like slowly get this juice in here. And then, you know, the juice instantly forms like surface tension over the hole. And so you can't fill up the juice into the pod. So you kind of go and you kind of wipe it out and you make sure the hole's open again. You go, oh, and you get a little bit of juice before it seals itself back up again. So you go, and then you wipe it all off and you put a little bit of juice in there. And I was mostly really just getting insanely, insanely frustrated. And I said, fuck it. I went out for the day with just my me pod and a half full tank. And I was like, I'll just go buy a pod system somewhere in New York. I know they'll be readily available. Sure enough, I, I don't, I couldn't tell you, couldn't tell you where we were. I believe it was the upper west side, maybe a few blocks north of Lincoln Center. Doesn't really matter. But we walked into a convenience store and uh, we got, you know, a Juul starter kit and a bunch of mango pods and it was great. And I vaped the Juul in New York and I vaped the Juul the whole time until I discovered the Zur pod that I picked up in the UK. And since then, the Zur pod has been it. It's, it's just been the pod system that I love so much. It's not perfect by any means. I'm getting a little bit of, uh, you know, juice residue, some leaking on the pod. Sometimes I see some little bit of juice residue on the outside, but the quality of mouth to lung vape from this Zur pod is just phenomenal. And this is another one of those things that when you're moving and you're making trips back and forth to the car or you're unloading boxes or you're opening boxes and packaging stuff up, having this dope little thing just to throw in your pocket and just have a vape with you, it's amazing. This is the mint. I have a certain order. I have a sample pack of pods, which I'm gonna buy a lot more Zur pods, but right now I'm just working through my sample pack. I don't love the tobacco, but I do love the mint quite a bit. I like the strawberry and I love, like I worship this green apple flavor. So I'm saving that pod for last. Right now this is the mint pod and I'm slowly vaping through it. After I get through this pod, we're going to hit up the strawberry. And after I get through that strawberry pod, oh, we're on to apple land and apple's going to be great. And as soon as I get into that apple pod, I'm just going to order a bunch of apple pods because that's all, that's all I want to vape in this Zur. The airflow is just so nice. It's so tight. It's so flavorful. I, I, I can't explain it until you try it. I just uh, I just really like the Zur pod. Also the Mai Li with a Cubano pod, which is, I mean, basically empty. There's just two tiny little puddles of juice in there. But I've been vaping this Mai Li pod like crazy as well. So one of the things that I set up instantly right away when I got back into this office, this is that twisted black purge mod that I picked up at Vape Jam UK. I got it topped with a gold recoil Rebel. Uh, it's only a single 18650 on the inside. Pony on acid. This is this is great. I bought some uh, amber colored non-child proof glass dripper bottles off of Amazon. Don't get me wrong. Child proof bottles should be the standard, but as a, 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 an adult American that lives by myself with no children, I don't want child-proof juice bottles. So I transfer my juice into non-child-proof juice bottles because they, they just work so much better. It's so much easier out of a non-child-proof glass dripper bottle. It's cleaner, it's smoother. It's just a better system all around in my opinion. But this is also a stellar vape. This is one of those vapes that while I was moving, I kept thinking about. I kept thinking, I was like, oh God, I wish I had my Recoil Rebel. I wish I had a Mech Mod. I wish I had some Pony on Acid. That's what I wish I could vape right now. Awesome. Stellar. That's a stellar vape. I also almost right away reset up the Dwayne, you know, his Omboyosi Rage Squonker mod. And I know that I've been getting eight quadrillion requests for a review of this. I don't have the final version yet. I don't want to bother Dwayne. Dwayne's going through a lot right now. Him and a few other guys are literally opening every Rage Squonk box and quality checking it and setting bad ones aside. They noticed an issue in the final version with some sort of solder connection 
point or something like that. And as soon as Dwayne noticed this, he went, nope, we're quality checking every single Rage Squonk box that comes in. So that's what he's been doing. And I don't want to be like, hey, Dwayne, I know, you know, I know you're doing a lot of work over there, quality checking every single box that comes in. But if you could, you know, hook me up, find a way to get me a Rage Squonker so I can, you know, I can review it on YouTube. I think that would be real solid as well, bro. We'll get to it when we get to it. Uh, it's it's a banging squonker. Here's what I'll say. I've only been using the prototype, but come on. It's it's a banging squonker that I really enjoy using. I've got this topped with the Kali RDA still. I really like this RDA for squonking, especially like more of a clouds bro clouds type of, you know, squonking setup, regulated squonking setup. Got a 0.13 dual coil in here, 73 watts. Let me make sure it's uh, squonked and juicy. Oh, you are getting squonked and juicy. And this is that uh, Yami Vapor ju Jusu juice that I've been vaping through. I got a 100 mil bottle. It's coming kind of down to the end here, but I really have enjoyed this. It's like a sweet candy apple. I don't want to say candy. I hate, I avoid you. I try to avoid using the word candy, but it's a very sweet sort of uh, apple flavor. I get a little bit of like, uh, like a clovey component to it, which is interesting as well. But with a 0.13 at 73 Watts, pff, it's banging. It's banging. Just freaking delicious. And then lastly, but not leastly, I've been vaping this little squonker. Got this squonker. I believe this squonker comes from ODB. And ODB do those battery wraps. They did like... Uh, maybe some questionable battery wraps like the Me Seeks battery wraps and they did the Pickle Rick uh, battery wraps as well. I might actually do some Grim Green battery wraps with them because I really like their wraps and the graphics that they have on their battery wraps look super cool. So there's a possibility of some Grim Green battery wraps uh, with ODB coming out. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's literally just an idea. We had a one minute conversation about it and then I got his business card, but it's kind of something I would really like to do. So I've been using this squonker and they put a stormtrooper on it for me, which is, I think is cool. I think that's super cool. I get it that that's like uh, IP, you know, you're going up against Disney. They don't mass produce these with stormtroopers. He made one with a stormtrooper kind of just for me, which, and, and I'm very appreciative of it. I could kind of feel differently about it if this was like a big mass produced thing, like every white Ares squonker that ODB releases has a stormtrooper on it. I would kind of go, okay, well, enjoy your cease and desist from Disney. But I feel like this one off, uh, I'm just really enjoying it. And it's topped with uh, the white painted recoil rebel that coil turd sent me that we opened in the last video pre-built it came out to a 0 0.17 0 0.17 i think it was a 0 0.17 but this is loaded up with smacks lick it i've got the nub tip adapter for the recoil or for the rebel on there rather and this has been a really stellar vape i don't love this mod this mod has a little bit of of weirdness to it and this isn't going to be a full review for this mod right now because <laughs> this is literally just the what I've <laughs> what I've been vaping. I try not to go into way too much detail, but here's what I've noticed about this squonker. First of all, let's vape it because lick it from from Smacks is amazing. Awesome, awesome vape. That is a really great vape. This squonker doesn't squonk correctly. When I squeeze the bottle, I can just compress the bottle completely all the way down and, and it doesn't flood the deck. It does No juice comes out of the airflow holes. I'm not flooding the deck. And when I let go, I can hear it kind of slurp back in, but my juice bottle level never goes down. And when I squeeze it, it feels like there's an air gap somewhere. And I don't know if that air gap is in the 510 connection. I don't know if that air gap is in the bottle itself, but when I squeeze it, I can hear air coming out before I hear liquid come out. And it's just been really, really bizarre. I have to squonk this like five or six times, like really, really get this pumping until I can get some juice up into those coils. And even after all of that squonking, the coils on the inside still aren't flooded. They're wet, but any other squonker, that much squonking, one, two, 
three, just cranking away on this, any other squonker, the atomizer would have been just flooded. I would have had juice coming out of the airflow holes on this. But there's some sort of weird air leak between the bottle and the atomizer that I can't figure out where it is. And this one isn't really conducive to putting like a silicone bottle in there, I might try out, I might just try out a completely different bottle. I'm going to try out a silicone bottle. I'm going to re, you know, redo the straw on there and put a silicone bottle in there. Additionally, I've noticed that there's juice getting inside here. There's like a little itty bitty tiny little baby puddle of juice right here. And again, I don't know where that juice is coming from. But this is one of those setups that I just think looks so cool that I, I kind of just keep putting up with it. But I will have to do some bottle science later on because I'd really like this to work more efficiently. But it's rocking. It's rocking, rocking good vape. Anyway, uh, that's what I've been vaping. So what I would like to do right now is, look, I don't have any other camera angles. I haven't experimented around with uh, shooting video quite yet in this office. So this is the camera angle for the vlog. We're going to stay right here. It's time to jump into a little bit of news and advocacy. News and advocacy. Yeah. So the first thing, the first thing that I have to mention in news and advocacy is the comment feedback period for the FDA. We're getting closer and closer and closer to when this comment period is going to end. So we really, I mean, Honestly, we all need to do this. We all need to do this. I know I said it a lot in the last video, but we definitely all need to do this. So I'm gonna put a link down in the description to where you can comment Give your, give your feedback to the FDA regarding flavors and in, in vapor products, how important they are to you, how important they are to smokers, and how important they are to current vapors as well. This is huge. This is a huge thing. This is a huge deal. And, and I really genuinely would just like everybody to do it of their own volition without having to be, you know, beaten over the head constantly like, do things, do this, do this thing. I don't want to be, I don't want to be that guy but this is, uh, this is quite, Im uh, quite an important thing. And so the first thing I wanted to talk about was uh, something I saw on Reddit. I go to Reddit uh, constantly. I go to Reddit every day. I go to Reddit every day. I, I browse Reddit every single day and I browse the electronic cigarette subreddit every single day. Sometimes upvote some things, sometimes downvote some things, sometimes leave little comments here and there. It's no big deal. It's just a, a throwaway account. It's not, it doesn't, the, the account doesn't say grim green or anything like that, but I like to take part in the community and I like to see what they're talking about over there from time to time. I find it helpful. Mostly, mostly very helpful. And I don't want to turn this into like, you know, I don't know, some sort of like Reddit bashing session. Reddit sometimes just becomes an echo chamber. That's kind of what the subreddits become. All of them do. And so I saw this post on Reddit that said, if you need proof of smoke owning Rip, and he's talking about Rip Trippers, and then he posted a picture of this big display at the last uh, Chinese Vape Expo that happened just, what, two weeks ago? Maybe not even that. It was just about two weeks ago. And it's the smoke booth, or, or some people say smock. And let me tell you that the people that say smock are wrong. It's not smock. It is smoke. They used to be smoke tech. But anyway, smoke had this big, big booth, big, big display, huge picture of rip trippers on there. Just a, an enormous, giant, bigger than rip trippers ever needs to be. This is like billboard sized rip trippers, right? And so the guy made this post and it says, oh, if you need any evidence of smoke owning rip, making the illusion that Rip Trippers is just taking money hand over fist from Smoke and doing anything for Smoke and just, you know, Smoke owns Rip. They got him in his, you know, they got him in their back pocket. No matter what they release, Rip's just going to take the money and give it a good review. And we got to all of these assumptions based on this one singular picture. And the comments on this post, and I'll link to it in the description, kind of did the same thing. It's just kind of a Rip bashing, bashing session. And then they, they start talking about, other reviewers and they're like, well, I like Suck My Mod. I think he's a nice guy. And people are like, you know, I only watch, you know, I only watch Jay Hayes. He doesn't get stuff for free. Everybody else gets stuff for free. And I, I only watch Jay Hayes or I only watch this guy or I've never watched this or I don't care about YouTubers. I just look at, you know, I just watch YouTube videos just to see the device. I don't give a fuck about any of them. But so it kind of becomes this little bit of a 
echoing chamber bashing session on YouTubers, which, I mean, that happens every once in a while on that particular subreddit. I see it every few months. It's, it's no big deal. It's whatever. It just happens. It's just something that happens, and I get it. And, and this picture really stuck in my craw because it's not what people think. You see this picture of the smoke tech booth, you see a big picture of rip trippers, and this person and a lot of people in this thread, their first instinct was, well, well, rip trippers sold out. Look at that, look at that huge smoke thing. They own him, right? Then I had a friend who was also at that exact same Chinese vape show, and he sent me this picture. And you know what that picture is? That's a giant picture of me at the Hangson booth. This is what China does. Smoke does it with a lot of the reviewers that review smoke stuff. This one just happened to be a giant picture of Rip Trippers. When I was in the UK, it was a giant TV screen of Zofi vapes. And apparently, Hangson, which I, I have never had any contact with Hangson, I don't think an email between me and Hangson uh, even exists anywhere. But I realized that I did review that IQ level pod system that I picked up at ECC, and I I really liked it. And even in that video, if you go back and watch my, I don't remember what it was titled. It was like four pod systems in 20 minutes or something like that. And this IQ level is a, it was a great pod system and I really liked it. And I had no idea who made it. I was like, this comes from IQ Vapor. I think it's manufactured by Hangson, but I have no idea. And so what Hangson did is yeah, apparently they are the manufacturer of the IQ level, that pod system, the IQ level, which I still really enjoy. It's almost all Casey Pickle vapes anymore because she fell in love with that blueberry flavor from it. In fact, when we went to the East Coast to visit her family, she bought like I don't know, $80 worth of these pods from Vapor DNA and had them delivered. Anyway, she likes this pod system and it's a damn good pod system. And I included that pod system in a video with a bunch of other pod systems. And so what Hankson did is they took the clips of me talking about their pod system and blew them up huge on a huge video screen at this uh, vape event in China and didn't communicate any of this to me. There is a very, very good chance that Rip himself did not know that Smoke was going to use his likeness because I did not know that Hangson was going to use my likeness on a huge video screen at a Chinese vape show. There was no, hey, we're gonna do this. There was no communication at all. And like I said, in my inbox, I have zero emails back and forth between me and Hangson. I've never, Hangson, I'm not even sure if I'm saying it correctly. There's never been any sort of arrangements between me and Hengson. There has never ever been any money exchanged between me and Hengson for uh, advertising or queue jumping or anything like that, which is fairly standard practice on YouTube. It was literally just, I got this one pod kit at ECC and I liked it, so I included it in a video with a bunch of other pod systems to compare them all together. That's what I did on my end and I had no idea, literally zero idea that my image was being used in that capacity at a vape event by Hankson. And if my friend hadn't been at that show and took a picture of the booth for me, I would have just never known. Wouldn't I would have never known that they did that. And like I said before, there was no previous talk of this. There was no arrangements of this. They, did, they didn't pay me money to use that at their booth. They just did it. So I think we need to give Rip Trippers a little bit of the benefit of the doubt because like me, there's a very good chance that he just had no idea that they were using his image on their booth. And I genuinely kind of think it's a little bit of horseshit that based on one picture that there was like a 600 comment thread just thrashing Rip Trippers and dragging all these people through the mud based on a picture, based on no information. That is called making conclusions based on your emotions and that is horse shit. Get facts first because facts matter. Anyway, that's that's my little rant about that. Um, yeah, I, I was on a big, big big booth from Hankson. Ne never talked to Hankson ever, and I don't know why that happened, and that, it's whatever, it's, fucking, it's out of my control. It's, it's just what China does, man.
it sucks, but it's kind of just what China does. And there was another thread on Reddit as well, and I honestly don't understand the point of this. There is a list of YouTube reviewer product collaborations. Um, so this is an this post was edited heavily, but he said this list doesn't really fit into the post topic anymore. Now included are also people who aren't really reviewers and people who didn't strictly do a collaboration with another company. Who cares? I'll call it products by vape celebrities and influencers. Apparently this is a list that really did need to exist. He says with the recent posting here about smoke owning rip trippers, I was curious which YouTube reviewers actually did official products collaborations with e-cigarette companies. And I apologize right now if this camera angle is awkward. My monitor's over here, so I'm trying to read, but I'm also trying to be close enough to the microphone that you'll hear me. Cool. Anyway, he says, I focused on hardware and did not include any e-juice lines as there are just too many to list. So he lists off all the things. Alex from Vapors MD, he did the Vandy Vape Berserker, the Vandy Vape Berserker Mini, the Vandy Vape Berserker RDA, the Vandy Vape Phobia, the Twisted Messes Skill RDA, right? And we have Ambitions Vapor, the Hell Vape, the Hell Vape Aquitas. No, I didn't say it right, did I? Oh, how do you say it, Sherlock Holmes? Equitas. Damn it. Equitas. And so he includes all of these on here, uh, Heathen and the Dead Rabbit and Jay Hayes with Raven's Moon and Mike Vapes with the Vandy Vape and now with Watofo and then Morton Owen with the Nord RDA, which I'm really excited to try out. He included P. Basardo with the Inakin Eris. He re included Rip Trippers with the Digiflavor Pharaoh, the Pharaoh Mini, the Pharaoh Dripper Tank. He included Suck My Mod with Wismac. I'll just link to this in the description. He included Tenacious TX Vapes with the Times Vape Dreamer. And then he also included Grim Green Omboy OC, Recoil RDA, Recoil Rebel RDA. And he didn't list a manufacturer because we keep our manufacturer secret. And I just wanted to quickly explain the difference between, uh, let's say, when Mike Vapes does the recurve RDA. Mike Vapes got the new recurve RDA out from Watofo. There's a difference between when Mike Vapes does the recurve RDA and when me and Dwayne did the recoil RDA. And I believe, I believe that I have mentioned this or talked about this in the past, but with this list out there on Reddit, I figured I would give a little bit more background information onto how this works because, like I said earlier, the facts do matter. So when Mike Vapes does the recurve RDA with Watofo, Watofo 100% covers the costs of everything involved with that atomizer. Mike Vapes designed it, gave those designs to Watofo. Watofo does all of the prototyping, covers all of the manufacturing costs, covers all of the distribution cost, color covers all of the shipping costs, covers all of the sales, all the distribution, every prototype that comes out, Watofo eats those costs up. Mike Vapes pays zero money out of pocket to design and develop this RDA. And then he will get, you know, uh, a few dollars per unit sold. And that's how that works. When, when, when someone does something with a known company like Vandy Vape, like Watofo, like Smoke, like Times Vape, it's the manufacturer that is eating all of the costs of creating this product. When Omboy OC and myself did the recoil RDA, we went to a manufacturer with our designs and we paid for the prototypes to be made. And if there's more prototypes that need to be made, if we make revisions on it, we pay for those prototypes to be made. And then we have to make an order for RDAs. So if we order 10,000 RDAs, we pay that money up front. We have an upfront overhead cost of 10,000 RDAs. And the way that we make our investment back on this is to sell those RDAs and make our investment back and hopefully make a profit on top of that. It's a very, you know, cut and dry, black and white, capitalist selling a product you know, uh, process. That process of selling a product is very insanely different than collaborating with an already established manufacturer like Watofo or like Vandy Vape to release the product that you designed. Is that making sense? Did I explain that right? I have a feeling I didn't explain that right, but I'm just gonna go with it. And I'm certainly not saying that one way is better than another way, but the reason that me and Dwayne did it that way is because we wanted it to be our own product 
product. We wanted the recoil. We wanted our own branding. We wanted complete 100% control over this atomizer. Everything, top to bottom, fit and finish, the drip tips, the logos, the packaging, the box, everything is is our own it's our own product we have 100 percent say over what happens with this product how it's marketed what it looks like on the outside what it looks like on the inside complete 100 percent control it is our product that we created invested our own money in pre-bought atomizers and then sold them i did not want to release an atomizer. I didn't want the recoil to be a Watofo product. I don't want Watofo logos on my product. And I like Watofo and, and they're a great company, but I don't want Watofo logos on my product. I don't want Watofo having a say in what my atomizer might look like. I don't want Watofo having a say in what logos are gonna go on the atomizer. I don't want Watofo having a say in what the packaging looks like or what the MSRP is going to be or how much money I'm going to make off of the product I designed. So I just felt like maybe a little bit of clarification was needed on there. And look, again, I'm not saying that one way is better and the other way is worse or that this way is better and the way that we did it is worse. It's just a different way of doing business. The longer I go on this, I'm just gonna end up repeating myself. So I'm gonna leave it here. We wanted to do the recoil as just the recoil and not associated with any other uh, brands or Chinese manufacturers or anything like that. Because now when you see the Mike Vapes Iconic, it is associated with Vandy Vape. Mike Vapes and Vandy Vape have a business agreement where money exchanges hands in order to fund this atomizer and Mike Vapes makes money off of this atomizer that is associated with Vandy Vape. We just didn't want the recoil RDA associated with uh, a large scale sort of Chinese manufacturer. I don't want people thinking of the recoil rebel and going, oh, that's uh, that's Watofo or going the recoil, you know, the recoil, oh, that's, uh, you know, whatever. Og vape, right? We, we wanted our products to be our products uh, only. Sorry, I'm getting rambly here and I hope that really made sense. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about this. And I'm not saying that because Mike Vapes released the iconic RDA through Vandy Vape that he's gonna be biased towards Vandy Vape because I believe that you can remain completely impartial and unbiased even when money does exchange hands between someone and a manufacturer. I'm just saying that now, that atomizer, Mike Vape's creation of the iconic RDA isn't just his, it's his and Vandy Vapes, and I didn't wanna go down that road. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap that up. That's too much rambling, that is too much rambling. So I'm gonna end this news and advocacy segment the way that I always do. Please go check CASA, join up with CASA, follow the calls to actions. They put calls to actions out for every legislative, almost every legislative thing that is happening on a state and local local level, that is a lot of where the battlegrounds are for defending vaping. I know New Jersey right now is going through a 75% tax on vapor products. 75% is uh, un unbelievable. That <laughs> That's just unbelievable to me. So keep an eye on what's going on locally as far as vaping legislation goes. And the best way to do that, honestly, is just join up with CASA. It's free. You put in your email address. They send you newsletters and how you can take action to help defend vaping. And don't forget about the open comment period with the FDA. As Kevin Skipper used to say, you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something and this is something that we definitely all absolutely need to do anyway good this is great this is going great this is go this is awesome this is going great and, and i like the new office i like the vibe in here i don't have anything on the walls yet i'm gonna feel a lot better when i get some cool shit on the walls but i am uh, i'm really enjoying this vibe right here so what i would like to do now is sure let's jump in a time machine let's uh Let's go to, I don't know, I can't shoot in my kitchen. I'll try to find somewhere to shoot. I'll try to find somewhere to shoot, we'll drink some beer.
Actually, yeah, fuck it. Let's drink some beer right here. I'm in the mood for beer, so let's drink some beer. Fuck a time machine. I don't need to wait. Let's have some let's have some afternoon beer, shall we? So I found this cup while I was moving and it had a, a postage stuck in it. And for some reason, this leads me to believe that I was supposed to remember this for some reason. Like this was literally just in here and it's an address with a person's name on it. William? William in Indiana? Did this glass come from William? William, if you're watching this, let me know about this glass. It says Flensburger Pilsner, and it's just a, you know, it's a tulip style glass, but for some reason I saved this, and it says William. William on it. In any case, William, thank you for the glass. We're gonna be drinking an IPA today. I don't know what it is. Maybe I, maybe I like IPAs now. I go through this thing with IPAs. It's okay, I have a Millennium Falcon bottle opener right here that we're gonna to use to open this. This is Lagunitas Maximus IPA, India Pale Ale, brewed and bottled by the Lagunitas Brewing Company, Sonoma County, Petaluma, California. It's a strong beer, this is an 8.2, so I'm not gonna be drinking this whole thing. I mean, eventually I'm gonna drink this whole thing. I'm just not gonna drink this whole thing right now. And this Millennium Falcon bottle opener kind of sucks. Oh, all right. I had to rinse out my cup there. I realized there was probably like a year's worth of dust in there. Anyway, I'm gonna be pouring it into this glass right here. Maximus IPA. Here we go. Look at that. It's looking clear. This is not a hazy IPA by any means. Does it make anybody else nervous? Like that I'm holding the glass like this? Oh, oh, how many fingers can I do? Three fingers. Oh, oh. Anyway, enough of that. Enough shenanigans. Anyway, this is an IPA. Uh, I had uh, my last beer in San Diego was an IPA as well from, uh, from Modern Times Brewing. Luckily, there is a Modern Times up here in Los Angeles as well. But anyway, cheers. Let's just drink this IPA. Cheers. Here's to you guys. First beer of LA is an IPA. It's going to set the tone for this whole, for my whole channel moving forward. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's really, whew, that is, uh, that is IPA-ish to the bone right there, son. And I don't know why I just said that, but it is. It's, uh, it, it, it's super IPA. It's very carbonated or effervescent. And I get that real bitey, like, pine type of IPA. There's very little sweetness in this particular beer. It's just real intense, real piney, like pine needles, like fresh pine needles. I get that hoppy piney flavor from it. I have literally nothing around me. Maybe Cubano, maybe Cubano from the Miley. Although this pod, I'm gonna need a new Miley pod. Hang on then. Sorry, I, I said I wasn't gonna do the British accent anymore and I just did it and I, I just wanted to catch myself and apologize. I'm not trying to do the British accent. No disrespect to my British viewers. I, I, I love all of you, but I really do need a Miley pod right now. Okay, that that was close. That was close. I don't know where I misplaced these Miley pods. I've only got two of the Cubanos left, which is my favorite flavor in the Miley. Look at that. Look at this. Look at this fancy little pod system right here. Pod systems got a lot of hate. We're gonna talk about pod systems. Maybe we'll talk about pod systems in the next vlog. Pod systems getting getting a lot of hate recently within the community. I think it's just because. People don't understand them. But I got a fresh Miley pod. Let's try it out before we do any sort of beer pairing here. Oh, I forgot that there's a little silicone guy right here. I couldn't, and I was wondering why I, saw, why, why, why when I drag on it, it felt like I was sucking on a pencil. Gotta remove that little guy. All right, now let's try this out before we do a beer pairing. Not bad. That, one, that, that fresh pod was really gurgly for some reason. Yeah, just instantly went away. Instantly went away. And because I like to cheat at things, I wanted to see what uh, Beer Advocate gave this Lagunitas Maximus. American Double Imperial IPA. It's an 8.2%, so watch out, world. Here's the thing. I don't drink a lot anymore. I used to... I used to drink a lot more. I used to, like, recreationally drink. In fact, I spent probably, I don't know, two years traveling to vape events and just 
drinking, just getting drunk constantly every night. We're like out partying because, you know, at vape events, it's, it's just like bars. You go to bars and everybody drinks. Let me buy you a drink. Can I get you a drink? You want a drink? I got you a drink. You want a beer? You need a new drink? You need a beer? You need a new drink? You want to do shots? Let's do shots. Phil Bassardo will always make you do a shot. If you are friendly with Phil Bassardo and you see him in a bar, he's like, Nick Green, let's get a shot. So I don't really drink a whole lot anymore. And now probably one glass of this 8% beer is, is just gonna mess me up a little bit. So now we'll have a real fun vlog to look forward to. Let's see what Beer Advocate has to say about it. Uh, aroma carries a good deal of malt with some strong hop base. Taste also carries some malt, which definitely helps mask some of the sharpness of the high gravity. Hops have a citrusy note, making this a well-balanced dipper that I would drink again. Yeah, nice uh, aroma of hop, citrus, tropical fruit, malt, and caramel. Was not getting any caramel caramel from this. It's just tasty. Apparently I like IPAs. I'm all turned around on the subject now, and apparently I'm a fan of IPAs. For the longest time, and Ruby Roo can attest to this, for the longest time, I was like, oh yeah, lo I love craft beer. Love craft beer. Don't really like IPAs, though. Just not into them, you know? They're too much. They're a little too hoppy for me. And all I needed, I guess, was uh, the right IPA to lead me down the IPA roads, and apparently that's what I drink now is IPAs. This one's good. This is a great afternoon beer. Oh man, this is a great afternoon beer. Anyway, let's try to pair this with the Miley. This is the Cubano. This is a cigar tobacco type of flavor that I really very much enjoy. So why not? Let's give it a shot. I honestly think it's going to be better than everything, anything else I have on the table right now. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that kind of reminds me of smoking cigarettes and drinking beer back in the day. That's what I did when you're in a rock band and you're playing dive bars every week. You just smoke cigarettes and you drink beer and that kind of what this reminds me of. The cigar tobacco flavor really does complement this IPA very nicely. It almost makes both of them taste a little bit sweeter, which is a weird sensation to experience. Good, that's a good pairing. In fact, I think this would go well. Hang on, let me get my Kilo. Oh, apparently this is just gonna be a pod system tasting. I got my Kilo with a nutty pod in it. Who's texting me? I don't know what I was talking about before I got texted. Kilo, 1K, nutty. This is the nutty pod, which I think is my favorite flavor from the Kilo 1K pods. The nutty is delicious. It's kind of like a tobacco chocolate. There's like a, there's like a ch hot chocolate, I get a, like a hot chocolate sensation from this. Anyway, let's give it a try here. Yeah, that's actually pretty nice too. All right, lastly, but not leastly, oh wait, maybe not, this tank might be empty. Oh yeah, that tank is empty, but the coils do look wet, so let's try this out. Atlanta Peach Leaf out of the Pod. let's give it a try. Mm. It's okay, it's not the best. It's just okay. The Miley is really where it's at right now. This Cubano and this juice, I mean, I mean, Pony on Acid, I don't know. I don't think Pony on Acid's gonna go with this. Not really, I mean, it's fine, not really. That Pony on Acid is so sweet, it actually makes this beer taste a little bit sour and a little bit soapy and weird. Anyway, so yeah, cheers, here's to you guys. That's what I got for a beer tasting and right now in the vlog is normally where we would jump into some vape mail but I have no vape mail so I've prepared a little bit of a segment and uh, we're just we're just gonna talk about Segeli for a little while so let's go to that generic segment bumper uh, so really what I want to call this segment is <sighs> what happened Segeli just in general what happened? I got I got a few mods from Segeli here. I got four mods that came in the mail from Segeli, and they are all. Oh no, this is a Joytech one. Okay, well, Joytech, you're, you're you're doing okay for now. We'll just set you to the side. This is all about Segeli right now. So Segeli. 
back in the day, I used to really like Segeli. I used to really like the regulated tube mods that they made, and I loved, loved, loved the 100 watt and 150 watt box mods that they did. Remember the old Segeli 150? That was like a staple mod for me. I just loved it so much. I bought one in Oregon at a vape event in early 2015. I went up to Oregon for a vape meet in 2015 and the local shop Emerald Emerald Vapors, I bought a Segeli 150 just because I thought they looked so cool. It was such a cool, clean, little minimal box mod that was powerful and responsive and I just really overall really liked it. And then somewhere along the way, I feel like Segeli kind of lost their way. And maybe it was a case of Segeli not being able to compete, like keep up with all of the changes that are happening in the vape industry. And, you know, I mean, you guys know this, you're part of the, you're part of the vape world, part of the vape community. The technology moves so quickly and the, ch and the trends change so quickly that it's honestly hard to keep up. I eat, live, sleep, and breathe vaping. And it's hard for me to keep up sometimes with all of the, all of these new products coming out. And it's like, no, and well now everyone loves squash. Squonkers. What happened to RDTAs? Nope, nobody cares about RDTAs anymore. Stop manufacturing. We're all about squonkers now. Oh, well, now it's sub-ohm tanks, and now it's mesh sub-ohm tanks, and now it's Kennedy-style airflow, and now it's velocity-style decks, and now it's squonking, and now it's this, and now it's that, and now, oh, now we're back to mech mods, and everyone's using mech mods again. The technology and the... the the, the preferences, the, the trends just change so quickly. And I feel like Segeli might have just got lost in the shuffle somewhere. So let's open, I'm gonna open all of these up and we're gonna vape all of them because they're all really weird and wonky and cumbersome. And I haven't seen reviews for any of these out there, they, they they probably exist. I just I just haven't seen them. I've been out of the loop for a little bit. I haven't been catching up on my YouTubes, you see. And so the first one I pull want to pull out is probably the most ridiculous one. So this is the Snow Wolf Squonk V Feng. I don't know if Segeli has always been producing the Snow Wolf stuff. Snow Wolf itself was kind of popular a few years ago. There was the original Snow Wolf box mod that I liked. I liked it so much I took it with me to VaporCon West and vaped it basically the whole time I was there. And then Segeli kind of took that Snow Wolf idea and that Snow Wolf branding and just kind of just rammed it into the ground. So this is the latest from Snow Wolf. This is the Squonk V Feng. And this is what it looks like. This, this is what it looks like. It's a big blue mod with Snow Wolf down the back and it comes with an RDA that's like weird and it looks like, like a lug nut for a car tire or something. It's overall, for me, a really aesthetically unappealing mod and for the size, it's only a single battery mod. This is only a single battery mod. 18650 goes in the bottom, so we're gonna put an 18650 in the bottom. And so I went and I played with a little bit, I went and played with these a little bit. I didn't really set them up, and what I'm gonna do right now is actually set them up, set them up, and vape them, because I wanna be wrong about Segeli. I don't wanna just shake my head and go, Segeli, what happened? I, I wanna objectively try to get into these mods and see if there's anything redeeming about them other than just being being big and ugly and gimmicky. And look at this, two squonker bottles, two squonker bottles. I feel like Segeli and Snow Wolf or Segeli in general using the Snow Wolf brand just kind of went, well, squonking's really popular. What if we released a squonker with two bottles on it? I feel like it's just two bottles for the sake of having two bottles and it does not, it's not really value added to the vaping experience or to the squonking experience. One thing I will say is Segeli, redeeming quality of Segeli is their displays. Their screens and displays are Beautiful. This ugly, ugly, ugly Snow Wolf Squonk V Fang kit. It's got a beautiful screen. I can see everything I need, and it's sharp and it's clear. It shows me my battery life. It shows me how many puffs I've taken. It'll show me the resistance. It'll show me the voltage. It shows me the wattage. It's just an overall pretty beautiful screen. This postless deck in here, meh, I don't know. Nothing really to write home about. It's just a big postless deck with huge, huge, big slotted airflow on there. It feels fairly nice. 
I don't get the two bottles, right? So there's two juice bottles, and they're not normal sized juice bottles. They're real small. They're they're real real tiny little juice bottles. This is probably what a three mil capacity. Yeah, it is. You have two three mil capacity bottles on here and the idea is that you're going to put one flavor in this one and one flavor in this one so that you can combine the flavors in your atomizer why not just combine the flavors before and then put them in a bottle and then vape the flavors together why would you go th that seems so much easier to me to take this bottle and this bottle and I don't know, this bottle. And you go, all right, I'm going to put some bro trip in there, I'm gonna put some pony on acid in there, and, and then I'm going to have this bottle that's bro trip and pony on acid combined, and then I'm going to drip it on my coils and I'm going to vape it and see if I like it. You have to commit to two flavors here. You have to go, all right, well, I'm going to fill this bottle with pony on acid, and then I'm going to fill this bottle with bro trip, and I'm going to attempt to squeeze them at the same time together so that I can get the same mixture up into my atomizer and then vape it. Or alternatively, you go, okay, well, maybe I don't like a 50-50 blend of bro trip and pony on acid, so I'm going to squeeze a little bit more from the pony on acid and then just a little bit less from the bro trip and then vape it. I've never felt the need to have a mod that combines my juices for me. I'm not a big mixing of juices guy anyway. So I kind of feel like the novelty of this, the whole you can mix your juice juice flavors in the mod and have two juice bottles and it mixes the juice and puts it up to your atomizer. A lot of that's lost on me. Let me know down in the comments below. I would lo honestly love to know, is something like this appealing to you? Do you want a mod that has two juice bottles that you have to individually maintain and refill in order to mix your juice as it's going to your atomizer. I mean, am I way off base here, or is that a little bit ridiculous? So, I'm gonna set that up, and I'm gonna vape it, and I also got this. This is the v Vsigo v Vsigo K3 kit. Perfect for beginners, great for vapors, also from Sigeli. And it comes with a sub-ohm tank, comes with some coil heads on it. And this right here is a, I mean, this is 100%, 100% plastic. Top, bottom, plastic. Everything's plastic. This is all plastic. All 100% really lightweight plastic. Also, it's plastic. 100% plastic from top to bottom. Did I mention that it's entirely constructed out of plastic? It feels cheap. It feels really super low quality. The tank itself looks kind of cool. This kind of looks like a cool sub-ohm tank. It's got this like slight bell cap sort of, uh, you know, uh, tank on it. So it's a coil head in the middle. You fill it up from the top. Like that's kind of a cool looking sub-ohm tank. I feel like that sub-ohm tank actually looks kind of cool. Like that's, maybe if it wasn't green on the bottom, but even with the green, I feel like that's kind of a cool looking sub-ohm tank. It doesn't have a whole hell of a lot of capacity. I can't imagine this being more than like three mils maybe at the most, but it's kind of a cool looking sub-ohm tank. It doesn't have any adjustable airflow and it's completely plastic. This display, on the other hand, isn't a very impressive display. It's a very standard issue, sort of. It shows you what you need and it works. No bells or whistles, it's just, it's fine, it's whatever. And I actually don't mind those displays at all. Just show me what I need to see. In fact, when I first grabbed this out, I looked at the battery doors on the inside and I was kind of like, whoa, that could be, I mean, that almost looks like 2700 size. If this is a dual 2700 mod, then we might really have something there. But it's, it's a dual 18650 mod, which is fine. Here's the thing. I'm not coming down on dual 18650 mods. I love dual 18650 mods. I would rather have a dual 18650 mod, I think, than a dual 2700 just for size, unless you can make a good sized dual 2700 mod. I, I feel like I'd rather just stick to dual 18650s, but 
again, that's just me. That's that's my opinion. That's what this YouTube is all about. The display, yeah, it's boring. It's nothing to write home about. It shows you your watts, shows you your ohms, shows you your voltage, and it has a battery level indicator. We even with batteries in it, it feels like a, a plastic Fisher Price toy. And the the V Sigo symbol, the V Sigo shield. Can I go show you? Can I show you a picture of this? That V Sigo shield. Every time I glance at it, it reminds me of the V God logo. It looks like the V God shield, and that kind of bothers me. Obviously, I'm not saying like they ripped it off or anything like that, but it's close. I mean, that's real close to the logo that V God has been using for years. So we're gonna set up this sub ohm tank as well. Oh, it comes with a golden base. Maybe I'll put the golden base on there so that I can use this sub ohm tank on other mods. Oh, you have to pull the glass off. Wow, that sucks. Okay, as cool as this sub ohm tank looks, it is a bitch and a half to get that glass off of there. There's no threads or anything. It's just dry glass on a dry O-ring on the base and you have to pull you have to grip and kind of pull this off fuck me running that sucks and i don't want to use a screwdriver in there because it will crack the glass like crazy <sighs> no difference no difference i'm just going to end up breaking this glass that's what's going to happen does it come with a replacement glass because it might be worth it no does not come with a replacement glass i just want the gold base on there is that so hard to do sigilly Oh, <sighs> got it, got the glass off. So that's going to get set up as well. And then lastly, we have the Snow Wolf X Fang RDA kit. And this is the weirdest one for me. It comes with screen protectors like you would use on a smartphone for the screen and the back of your mod. That's just weird is that weird to anybody else that's just weird to me aesthetically i find this mod the least offensive looking of all of them it's a simple black it's got this cool logo on the back and honestly that wolf that geometric wolf i think looks very cool i think that's a very cool logo and very cool branding it's just unfortunately on a slightly ugly ass mod you got the snow wolf rda thing here on top as well branded very much the same way and it's the exact same deck minus the squonk pin from this guy from the x fang snow wolf squonker exact same deck on the inside exact same airflow oh no it's got a very different airflow okay same deck different airflow even even completely dry these o-rings are not holding on at all they just look at this it doesn't even hold on even a little bit not even a hair just sliding around all over the place what happened Segeli, what what happened? And again, it's got that really great Segeli display. The display is the same on both of these mods, and the display looks great on both of these mods. It just it's a pretty display. It looks nice. It shows you your battery levels. It shows you everything you need. This is actually the least offensive mod from Segeli out of all of these Segeli mods. It's not something that if I saw this, if I was like, if I saw this snow wolf x fang rda kit i wouldn't instantly go shit man that's something i need to own so i've got some setup work to do and what i'm going to do is i'm going to build this we're going to use it i'm going to build this we're going to put two flavors in here i'm going to build this and we're going to use the sub ohm tank and we're going to see how they vape while continually continuously asking the question what happened Segeli and I just want to say real quick uh, I built the other one but this RDA is one of the most annoying obnoxious pain in the ass bitch to build bitch to wick RDAs that I have ever used ever what happened Segeli nope I'm giving up. I'm giving up on this. And I apologize. I'm shooting this with my iPhone, but I am giving up on this stupid, stupid atomizer. They didn't give you enough room here to get any sort of tools in here. These are two and a half millimeter coils. 
So if I slide this on my coil tool right here, I can't get this in here to drop these coils down in there. I have to use tweezers. What happens is when you grab, you, oh, fucking where's my fucking coil? Set you down and grab you the correct way. Here's what's gonna happen. Get our coil and we gotta set it in here, right? Get one on each side. Oh, that was almost it. Just like that. And then the squonk pin comes up from the center and limits really very much limits how you can get in here and how you can adjust this and how you can, you know, move your coil around. Like I would love to be able to get this tool in there and be able to raise it around, move it up, move it side to side, get it positioned where I needed it to, but you can't. You're using 100% tweezers because that deck is so low. Look at how low that coil is sitting and then look at where it is comparison to the airflow. Your airflow is not even going to be touching your coil. And so you might be saying, well, Nick, you just you, can you trim that too low. Maybe you trim that too low. All right, fine. Well, let's take this coil right here. This is one of the included coils. If we drop this in here. So you have to really eyeball and measure your coil leads. So that's, that's you want to cut your coils so that your airflow is actually hitting your coils, which is a pain in the ass because you only get a few shots at this. You can take a little bit off, measure it, take a little bit off, measure it, take a little bit off, measure it. I have never run into this before with an atomizer where you had to clip little bits of your lead off in order to get it so that your coil is facing your airflow. I've never had to do that before. So I just pre-clipped these leads so that they would fit in there and it just sits Wait, oh, fuck it, fuck it, I'm done. I'm done with you. I'm done with you. I don't care about mixing two juices in my thing. This deck is the dumbest fucking stupidest, dumb, stupid deck. Dumb. Okay, sorry, we're not going to get to vape this. I'm not going to experience the joy of mixing two juices in my atomizer because this deck sucks the big one. It, it's the worst. This is the worst deck I have ever used. Even back in the day when I had like three post tugboat decks that were kind of a little bit of a bitch to work with, but you could get it and your leads went in and you clipped your leads and everything went in there fine. This is a goddamn nightmare and there's no reason why in 2018 with all of the technology available to us that this deck even exists on the market. It's almost as if they did no quality control, no prototyping and had no actual vapors vape this RD and go, yeah, let's release that. So I did manage to get the other deck built. I built it in there and uh, I don't know how it happened. I couldn't get my tools in there. This is 100% a tweezers install. And let me tell you, it's annoying. You, you just saw that it's annoying to install the coils. It's even more annoying to wick. And I definitely cut my leads way too short because looking in through the airflow, I can barely just see the tops of my coils. I can just barely see them. So you really have to be precise in clipping your leads to get them to the right level to sit maybe a little bit in front of that airflow because if they are down below the airflow like they are now, your flavor level drops to basically zero. And these O-rings with juice on them just got even worse. There's no, th these O-rings are the single weakest O-rings that I have ever experienced ever. They're, they're just, they're just terrible. Nothing, nothing, nothing's holding this cap on except for gravity right now. I even put the screen protectors on here. The back one came out okay. The front one just looks like a nightmare. It just looks awful. I see no reason why you would even need to entertain the idea of putting a screen protector on a mod, on a mod that you can probably buy for what, $40? You were so concerned about the plastic plastic screen that they use on here that they included screen protectors dude like 
What? What? What happened, Sigeli? What? I got this loaded up with a, uh, I wanted to, I really wanted to test the flavor of these. So I loaded up with Rainbow Sherbet in the Dark, which is a juice of, you know, my own design that I've been vaping for years and years and years and years and years. I know exactly how it should taste. These coils came out to 0.22. These are their included, really janky looking fused Claptons. And I mean, that's really neither here nor there, but I have found in my experiences that mass produced coils like this, like these Chinese fused Claptons, they'll vape and they'll vape fine, but the overall quality of them is real junky. Some of the outer wraps, some of the Clapton wraps are kind of over each other or there's big gaps in them. They're just not very precise coils. So we got a 0.22 at 54 watts, rainbow sherbet in the dark. Let's try this thing out. Um, re really uh, sharp, turbulent airflow, um, flavor basically non-existent. It, it kind of tastes like rainbow sherbet in the dark, but not really. Um, not really enjoyable. This mod isn't really enjoyable to hold, and I promise this isn't just a bashing session on Segeli. I'm not out for blood. Segeli didn't wrong me in any way. I've always thought Segeli was just a fine company. They're, they're, they're fine. But the stuff that they are releasing, these new like flagship products that they sent out are just some of the worst, most uninspired, poorly designed vape gear that I have come across in my nine years. So the Snow Wolf Segeli X Feng RDA kit would definitely, definitely not recommend this at all. And unfortunately, we're not gonna get to experience the glory of uh, squonking two juice bottles into the same very poorly designed, hard to build, difficult to wick, shitty airflow, non-flavor producing atomizer that's on top of the x Feng squonk kit. Keeping in mind this huge mod, they sacrificed dual batteries so that you could have dual juice bottles. If Snow Wolf, if Segeli just released a dual 18650 single squonk bottle, kit with a different RDA, it could have been a thing, but unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately they just released this thing and we're not going to get to experience that. So the last thing that we are going to get to experience this little guy right here, the one that's made of plastic. This is the Segeli Visigo K3 kit. This is a 0.23 ohm coil head, so I'm gonna turn this to about 50 watts. That's where I'm gonna start this off at. 0.1 watt increments, which is also slightly annoying, but I mean, that's not, uh, that alone isn't a deal breaker. The tank is difficult to take apart, difficult to put together. The coil heads are difficult to prime because they add Added this extra chimney section on top of the coil head. So you have your coil head kind of in the bottom here and then it curves in and then you have this little bit of chimney so that this can screw down onto it so you can open and close it to refill it where your drip tip sits. And what that creates is a really difficult coil priming process. You kind of have to get your juice bottle really far down in there and squeeze some juice like all throughout the inside through this much smaller opening than on any other coil head that I've used in the past, I don't know, four years, five years. I mean, coil head technology has kind of come a long way. We've got really easy to use coil heads. We've got high performance coil heads. We've got mesh coil heads that all work great. I can think of 8,000 sub-ohm tanks I would rather use than this one. On the plus side, I do think this tank looks really cool. I just think it was executed quite poorly. And unfortunately, the flavor on it is kind of junky as well. At least I was hoping for good flavor. It's hard to mess up the flavor of a sub-ohm tank. Sub-ohm tanks have become really, you know, real, real reliable in that you can plug a coil head on, you can prime it up, you can fill up your tank and you can taste your juice and you're gonna get great performance. This Segeli coil head is loaded up with uh, that Freeman Fall Spirit that we vaped a few weeks ago, been going through that juice as well. It's a delicious sort of like apple pie type of flavor. I just really enjoy it. And in this particular sub-ohm tank, it just, 
it just tastes the worst. It just tastes the most bad. Real airy, zero flavor. I feel like I just vaped VG. Okay, that might have been, look, the VG comment, that might have been a little over the top. I can taste the juice very little. I can taste the juice, but only slightly. No, it's not an enjoyable vape. It's just not. No, it's, that sucks. That flavor is so shitty. That is some shitty, shitty flavor, man. Overall, I'm really very disappointed. Even, I might go far as to say very, very disappointed, <laughs> but I'm quite disappointed with the latest offerings from Segeli. The Snow Wolf stuff and the Segeli stuff, the X-Fang Squonker, the X-Fang RDA, the K3 v Sigo kit, they're all really poorly made, really poorly executed, not a lot of thought behind it. The screens look beautiful. Overall, the mods are junky. The plastic one is plastic and flimsy. The sub -ohm tank tastes like garbage. That RDA is a fucking nightmare to build on. It's a nightmare to wick. I hate that they used up all this real estate with that they could have had batteries in here and they used two squonkers. You know what I would have loved from Snow Wolf? Here's what I would have loved from Snow Wolf. Just a smaller, maybe a little bit shorter of a box mod. This display on it. I don't even mind this color. Dual 18650. Don't include an RDA, Segeli, because you don't know how to make RDAs, apparently. Let me put my own RDA on here, and I would have loved a nice follow-up, a nice refresh, a nice 2018 version of like the Segeli 150. Just give us another Segeli 150, put a beautiful display on it, throw two batteries in there, give us nice fit and finish, and let us use our own RDAs on it because this, ah, ah, what happened, Segeli? <gasps> what happened anyway that is enough of the what 20 minute long bashing session on Segeli and look I'm not again I'm not out for blood Segeli didn't wrong me in any way I don't have any ill will towards Segeli as a manufacturer or a creator of vape product other than the last few products that they have released I wouldn't recommend to anyone I don't think anybody should buy any of these products. And I'm not coming down on people who might already have purchased these products. Look, if you own the XK Red 27, what's this thing called? The K3 kit, and you bought this and you own it and you vape it, then vape it. Then just use it and vape it. This is really all just my opinion, and my opinion is that these products are not worth the aluminum they are made out of. I know that was a pretty that was a pretty strong condescending statement there, and uh, I stand by it. I'm gonna stand by it. All these products are junky. I wouldn't recommend them to anyone. If anybody ever asks you if the X-Feng RDA kit is any good, you'd look them straight in the eyes and you say, please don't buy that. There are dozens and dozens of, I mean, hundreds, hundreds and thousands even of better quality products are out there that aren't necessarily relying on gimmicky things like two bottles, that aren't necessarily relying on gimmicky things like screen protectors for the screen of the mod. Almost every RDA that I've used, even the worst ones, even like, even weird ones, like remember the Freelander RDA? That was just a weird fucking RDA, but you know what? It was real easy to install my coils, it was real easy to wick, and it gave me a solid flavorful vaping experience, which is more than I can say for this junky okay i'm done i'm done i'm gonna stop ranting about it please don't buy these Sigeli. i'm not doing you any favors by saying that any of this is any good i would love Sigeli to come back to their former glory and produce some really good mods and maybe not just trash the snow wolf brand like put snow wolf on 
fucking everything. And I don't even know if Segeli are the originators of the Snow Wolf brand. I remember back in the day there was some like, well, this is where authentic Snow Wolf comes from, and this is the this is the replica Snow Wolf stuff. So I don't even know who really owns the Snow Wolf stuff at this point. But if it's Segeli, use the branding to create better products. Okay, I'm sorry. That's too ranty. This is way too ranty. This is way too ranty. Let me get a good vape. I just want to vape this right now because I've been so disappointed with what I've been vaping for the last 40 minutes while I was setting all this stuff up. Thank you, Equitas, for being a decent atomizer. Anyway, what we're gonna do right now is uh, we're just gonna do some viewer mails, and then after that, I think we're gonna do a very random juice tasting, and then we're gonna call this vlog-ish video done. So let's let's let let me clean up. Uh and burp apparently. Let me clean up and, and we'll get to that in a second. Okay, I, I apologize. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna skip. We're actually gonna skip uh, some viewer mails this week just because I have so much stuff to do with the house with with their new, it's not a house with their new apartment. I have I have tons of unpacking to do. I have tons of clothes to put away. I've got you know kitchen dishes to put away. So I'm gonna cut this a little bit short. We're gonna skip viewer mail, but viewer mail will be back next week when we get back on track with like. A real real vlog if anybody has any viewer mails that they would like to send in and see answered on this here vlog you can send them on over to nick at grimgreen.com just mark your subject viewer mail they will get read and filed accordingly so what we're going to do right now is we're just going to jump into a very random juice tasting So the juice we're going to be tasting today came from uh, came from the UK. This is some TPD juice that I picked up from uh, Vapor Rizzo. That was the shop that we all went to where Kent almost beat like you know the local favorite guy in the cloud comp. You know, all in good fun. I just want everyone to know we don't really take that stuff all of that seriously. It's really just something fun and entertaining to do while we're all hanging out and drinking. But we were at the Vapor Rizzo shop and Scott Riz himself handed me off some juice that I was just completely fascinated by. This is in 10 mil TPD compliant bottles. This is a rhubarb custard. What? Rhubarb custard so that's weird i've been craving rhubarb for a while now uh every time that we go to record the culture of clouds podcast well maybe not every time in fact i think this only happened once but i was talking about rhubarb and rhubarb pie how I've, I've really been after a rhubarb pie in fact i might make it my mission today to somehow get a rhubarb pie because i like rhubarb and i grew up with rhubarb and i like rhubarb pie and the idea of rhubarb custard oh just seemed oh so fascinating to me all right well that smells interesting let's give it a little bit of a knuckle test here i i i, I taste rhubarb i taste custard this is going to be an interesting vape so i decided to keep that xk red 27 uh mod the k what's it called the k3 kit out of all of those segelis i wanted to set up i want to leave this k3 set up a little bit just because you know what i mean it's a 150 watt plastic sort of dual 18650 beater mod and i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna need a use for that i'm gonna use it a little bit this is the loop rda uh freshly wicked built with some coil turd i believe fuse claptons on here are these fuse claptons are these aliens nope these are aliens these are coil turd aliens installed on the loop rda i'm gonna have a review for the loop rda real real soon i've been using it a lot i've been using it like crazy but let me stop talking and actually juice up these coils a little bit now i know this isn't a review for the loop rda but the loop rda uses a lot of cotton you have to use a lot of cotton and you have to really saturate all your cotton. This RDA uses more cotton than a lot of other RDAs out there, but we'll get to that when we actually do a full, 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 full review for it. This is a very, very low build on here. This is a 0.11, so I'm gonna run this at about 99 watts. I might just rock this at an even 100 watts. 0.11 at 100 watts, yeah, sure. It's only giving me uh, 3.5 volts, but it should feel like you know, an unregulated Mac or something like that. I'm fascinated by this juice. Rhubarb 
Custard. All right, Loop RDA, Segeli XK Red 27, what's the name of it? K3 Mod, Loop RDA, and Rhubarb Custard from Vaporizzo. Cheers, let's give this a shot. Huh. All right, so that's a little bit weird, but what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna sit back. I'm gonna vape on this a little bit. I'm actually gonna turn that wattage way down. I feel like it's way too warm and it might be cooking off some of that flavor in there. So I'm gonna sit back here, I'm gonna vape this and we'll come back and talk about it. All right, this juice is just a fucking weird juice, man. I, I get rhubarb and I get custard and that's what I get. And the rhubarb is weird and the custard is also a little bit weird. It's just, I don't know if rhubarb, I don't know if my craving, my love of rhubarb can overcome the weirdness of this rhubarb. The custard that I'm getting out of it is very delicious. It's a very rich, creamy custard. Then it's got this rhubarb on top of it. And rhubarb in and of itself is not a sweet, sweet flavor. The rhubarb is a really sort of, uh, I don't even know how I'd describe it. It's like a vegetal flavor, I guess, a little bit. And those two together, it just comes across as kind of a weird, weird juice. I got two juices from Vaporizzo. Uh, at one, okay, hang on. The other flavor I got from Vaporizzo is a cherry berry bubble gum. And this is the one that I was gonna vape today until I saw this box that said rhubarb custard candy. And I went, ah, all right, okay. I kind of would like to try the rhubarb candy custard Custard. Next week, maybe next week we'll give the cherry berry bubble gum a try because cherry in e-liquids is always a little bit weird. And now I've learned that rhubarb in e-liquids is a little bit weird. I feel like this would be a real acquired taste. And this also falls into the difference between US and UK e-liquid preferences, flavor profiles, things like that. Now I'm not gonna say that the UK likes weird flavors, but they're, they like flavors, and I'm painting with a real broad brush here, so I apologize. But what I have noticed is they like flavors that are different than, than US flavors. They have a little bit of a different palette. So rhubarb and custard could be someone's favorite, best, favorite all day vape. I don't know, Vaporizzo might sell this shit hand over fist. For me personally, for my palate, for my American palate, it, it's a little bit weird. It's a little bit of an acquired taste. I will say that my first few toots on it, I was just really weirded out. It just tasted real bizarre. But as I kept vaping it, I kind of went, all right, I, I get what they're doing here. I kind of see what they're after here. It's nice. It's not overly sweet. It's it's sweet, but it's not overly sweet. You get some rhubarb, you get some custard. It's a real weird flavor combination. And it's honestly just kind of not for me, but that's not to say it's a bad juice. I, I love Vaporizzo. I love the Vaporizzo guys, but this juice, this rhubarb custard, while complex and interesting, it's just not for me. It's just not for my palate. And that's okay, because when I went to Sweden, they eat candy that is coated in salt and tastes like the most intense black licorice I've ever had in my life. And Matthias was just eating them. He's like, so good. I love these candies. And literally, I threw one in my mouth and my face just turned inside out. <laughs> so you kind of have to have an adventurous palate for flavors, you know, across the pond. And I think this is one of those that you might need an adventurous palate for. But I keep vaping it. It's honestly getting better as I vape it, man. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's getting a little bit better as I vape it. Maybe I just need to spend a lot more time with it. Anyway, Vaporizzo, thank you for the warm welcome at your shop. You have a super dope shop, and thank you for the juice. It might not be like my favorite juice, but uh, I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the... I appreciate... <laughs>
What? Appreciate the gesture there, Vapor Rizzo. Anyway, let's move on past that. Let's wrap this vlog up. I do have a lot of work to do, but we're going to wrap this up. Favorite comments of the week. All right, so again, this is going to be awkward. I'm looking at my screen, but I'm trying to talk into the microphone so you guys can hear me. But, uh, oh, where did comment of the week number one? Comment of the week number one, Jeb left a comment and said, why must this be so late? I had nothing to watch while I pooped today. Oh, sorry, sorry, Jeb. Uh, I've, been, <laughs> I've been moving, and I find it hard to believe that you've got nothing else to watch when you poop. When I go voop, when I go, when I go have my nick time in the bathroom, when I voop and poop, uh, sometimes I have too many options. I'm like, oh, shit, well, should I look at Reddit? Should I watch uh, YouTube videos? I'm subscribed to, like, 80 people on YouTube. I'm like, oh, I could look at Instagram. I feel like you might have other options Jeb and uh, I apologize moving forward we'll try to make your pooping experiences uh, pooping experiences much better anyway comment of the week number two uh, don't know who sent this oh Sean the Baptist Sean the Baptist left a comment and said vicious ant or car payment yeah I did review that vicious ant spade and it's an expensive mod it's expensive it is that mod that's like do I buy this mod or do I make a car payment? <laughs> Comment of the... <laughs> Oh, yeah, here you go. Comment of the week number three. Bayou left a comment and said, I want to get this to be one of the favorite comments of the week at least once. Well, boom. Mission accomplished. You did it. See, all you had to do was ask politely, and you can definitely make it into comments of the week. Comment of the week number four coming from M. Buckner. He just said, uh, yep, cutting the nicotine makes perfect sense to me. They should also start an underwater basket weaving club. Absolutely genius move. Yeah, we talked about that whole, the FDA wants to cut the nicotine and cigarettes down to a lower level. And I thinking that's really only going to make people smoke more. I feel like the majority of people in the comments uh, agreed with me, but I still think that's a terrible idea. So, yeah. <laughs> Second to last comment of the week, Fink Rat just left a comment and said, the ginger wolverine. Yeah, he's talking about, he's talking about Kent and Kent is the ginger wolverine but kent's just kent you know what i mean you don't even call him twisted messes anymore just call him kent kent is kent kent is kent is kent <laughs> and, then the <laughs> and then the last favorite comment of the week uh fella named wm commented this on every video that i uploaded while i was in the uk but he said hey nick your weird ginger friend is funnier than you Hey, Nick, your weird ginger friend is funnier than you. Nick, just hand this channel over to your weird ginger friend. It's still funnier than you. So apparently, uh, I cannot add Mr. WM to the list of people that are entertained by Grim Green because Kent, I get it. I get it, sir. You think Kent is funnier than me. And I mean, look, if we're being honest, Kent is funnier than me. That's why I put him in my vlogs, because I think he's so fucking hilarious, and I want you guys to see how fucking hilarious Kent is. So anyway, that's what I got for favorite comments of the week. We're going to wrap this here vlog-ish style video up, but I feel like this was a pretty good first little broadcast from my first office. I feel like I got some, some pretty good lighting here during the day. Of course, the office is going to evolve. I'm going to have stuff on the walls. It's going to get a whole lot cooler as time goes on, but I'm just just here I'm just here now we're just getting settled once again thank you everybody for just bearing with us during this whole moving process it, it was really sudden it kind of just happened out of nowhere and now we're up here settled getting in LA and I promise things are going to get right back on track we're going to have YouTube content we're going to have Instagram content we're going to have content coming out of our ears including possible live streaming show that you didn't hear it from me. I'm honestly just trying to figure out a good time slot for a live streaming show. I don't want to like, you know, encroach on anybody else's time slots. I'm trying to be very diplomatic about this. I know people do a lot of live streaming shows on Friday nights and Saturday nights. So I'm thinking Sundays. I'm honestly thinking like maybe an early morning live streaming show. I don't know. A lot of that's still up in the air right now, but it's something that I am dying to do. And it is my next focus. My next project 
is going to be a fucking bitchin' live streaming show. So get excited. But anyway, that's gonna wrap up this vlog. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna have a couple more toots of this rhubarb custard candy to take me out here. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, let's keep on vaping. Uh, a few, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a